Yeah? yeah? Right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. module for that? There, of course there is. I was chatting with Lee Rowlands way, way far away from me in Australia recently. Hey Lee, and Lee wrote a blog post called Drupal 8 Won't Kill Your Kittens and I thought that was the, would be a great topic for the conversation and Lee invited along Tim Plunkett in San Francisco. Tim, are you with us? Yes. Hey Tim. Hello. And Daniel Vena in Germany right now. This particular discussion um, I got really inspired by a blog post that you wrote, um, let's see, uh, almost a month ago, and that blog post is called Drupal 8 Won't Kill Your Kittens. Yeah, so, I mean, I think one of the biggest wins coming with Drupal 8 is the entity field and improvements. Um, in Drupal 7, everyone who's worked with it will be familiar with these massive render array, all these massive arrays that are attached to the node which represent the field data. So yeah, for every field there's a property which is the name of the field and then it's an array which has you know, a language and then it's an, an array of values and then there's a, you know, each one of those is keyed by the columns in the field table and you know it's very arbitrary it almost seems. And I mean the only way to kind of debug it or to figure out what the hell is going on is to you know, either put a breakpoint where you get to that code or to, you know, dump out the, the contents of the node to see what you're doing. And the improvements in Drupal 8 that the Entity Field team have worked on and kind of been exposed to firsthand through the, the comment and forum upgrades is, um, yeah, it's far greater um, developer experience. I'm not going to go and discuss it in, in length because it really needs to see code samples, but if you have a look at that presentation, there is code samples in there of, of some of the stuff that's much easier to work with. Yeah, I think just this morning I was working with a taxonomy term, and I wanted to get a link to it, and it was triple seven, and I had to remember, oh yeah, I have to actually do like slash taxonomy slash term slash dot term ID, uh, TID, and like you know instead of just calling a method on it and getting the URI, and and, and there's like 18, every entity has a different way of saving things. And it, right, the, the massive so unification is just amazing. Yeah, I was talking with, I was talking with Whitehead about this last week. Um, the fact that basically everything works the same way now, um, you know, maybe it's hard to, to learn that, but then when you've got that stuff straight in D8, you're going to be able to reuse it across all the systems. And, and right. he, was just, he was just ecstatic about... Um, that kind of efficiency, even though the stack of, of all the pieces that you have to put together is maybe a little more complex when you're looking at it for the first time in D8, he thought that reusability and that uniformity was, was a, the, the, one of the biggest wins that we have. It's massive. I mean, the, number of, the, num the sheer number of entity types we have, um, you, I mean, if you learn parts of the entity system, that expands to, what, like 40 things? Um, and instead of having to learn 40 things, you learn one thing. I mean, it's just, there's no way this is 40 times harder. Yeah, and, and the other thing that I sort of touched on in that presentation is, well, you said there about, you know, there's a lot of pieces to lock together that are more complicated, but a lot of those pieces, module developers won't need to worry about unless they dig deep into the field API like Whitehead and Verda and... Um, and Swintel are that are sort of building it. Uh, you know, if, if you're not touching the low-level stuff, you, um, and you know, you probably won't even need to worry about that. You just need to use the parts of the API that are user-facing, like the, um, you know, the get the property definitions method that you can call on any field or on any entity, and it'll tell you the properties that it has. It's kind of self-documenting. Uh, it's, yeah. it's yeah. I would say that if you're hitting the really hard stuff in the Drupal 8 entity field stuff, you hit the same. St problems in Drupal 7, but it was even more confusing, and it wasn't self-documenting. So, I mean, yeah. you don't. Th there are more complex concepts, but they're buried just as far down. And if you're that far down, you're already in trouble. Yeah, I think with the with the unification, there will be a lot of possibilities for contrib modules. For example, I know in Drupal 7, there's the Entity API module, 
And based upon that, there are a lot of great solutions like a search API for search and um, all the commerce um, is built upon that and now all these tools can automatically use just the core API. I think this will really help to even grow more in conflict. And yeah, I don't know, find new yes. ideas. Search API is a classic example because it's got um, the concept of well, they're C tools exportables, I guess, but um, they're also entities in Drupal 7. So it's almost using the concept of a configuration entity before we had such a thing in core. I mean, um, Search API will benefit greatly from Drupal 8. It's got um, all the different plugins that it uses for, um, you know, the. it's got aggregator plugins for various transformations. It's got um, plugins that do um, filtering before it heads off. I mean, all of the features of Drupal 8, it's almost like a... Um, Search API almost looks like a, a roadmap from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8. I know that a lot of people have been confused about plugins. Can can yeah. you kick off a conversation about that, please? Sure, yeah. I mean, I'm not the best to talk about it because I'm sure the other two guys have done a lot more in this space than me. Um, my first exposure to this was through the custom block module, which is lets us have um, fieldable, translatable, like revisionable blocks in core. So it's kind of like Bean and fieldable panel panes um, in core. And it uses plugins to expose the block type. And so I think the block is a good example of the, where the plugins is, is far easier in Drupal 8. In Drupal 7, to define a block, um, you would have up to four hooks. So you would have a block to define, a hook to define the info, so the metadata about the blocks, you would have a hook to define the view, uh, and if you had a settings page for the form for the block, you'd have another hook to do the settings form and another hook to save the settings. And if you had more than one block defined by your module, then each of those, except for the info, would have a switch statement and that would switch on the delta. And so the size of the functions would soon start to swell. If you had four, you know, you'd have a massive switch statement with four chunks of logics all uh, rammed in on top of each other. And as a developer, I mean, that kind of stuff gets really unwieldy to work with. And, um, you know, keeping them all together is what plugin system gives us. So you have one file for each block. And if you want a new block, you can copy and paste the file and update the metadata and the implementation, and you've got a new block. And so instead of working in, four separate functions in four separate places in, you know, the one or two files. Yeah, you can just have one file for each block. Um, all of the logic is there where you need it. The metadata is defined in the same place. You don't have to go into any info files and declare the path to your class because it's auto-loaded. It, it, it's just much, uh, it's kind of well-contained and, and encapsulated in a single file. Yeah, I think the number one chunks of custom code I write on a daily basis are field formatters. And the same yeah. thing for blocks is, is true for field formatters. Um, but even more so in the sense that, uh, for example, one of the first modules I wrote that was like from scratch that I wrote was the field collection table formatter module, which just provided another uh, field formatter for field collections. But because it's all procedural code, I had to call the same functions that field collection was trying to use and then take their return and, and manipulate the data structure directly um, after it was done doing all of its five steps. Whereas if in Drupal 8, I would just uh, subclass their formatter, you know, extend it, and override just the parts I need, um, and, and then you have that whole reusability. And I mean, if people aren't writing field formatters for everything, um, they're probably doing it wrong, but it is very tedious and uh, error prone. And I think Drupal 8 is going to make it a lot easier. Um, and it's the same thing. There's six or seven hooks, and like five of them are required, and uh, two of them are optional. And I had no idea which ones were which. And stuff just doesn't work if you get them all. And now you have a single interface that says, these are the methods you need, um, and these are the ones that are optional, and here's how you do them. And the other thing that Lee just said is, like, if you want a new one, you copy and paste the entire file, and you're done. That's it. You know, there's no more adding, you know, new cases. And, you know, switch case is a hack. Like, every time you use that, it's probably a bad design. Um, and it's just not fun to work with either. Not fun <laughs> to maintain. 
Yeah, it's really great to see that we now have like I don't know twenty I don't know plugin types in core. So everything you basically do like fields as they mentioned uh, I don't know everything in views, um, everything with images like an image um, effect is now a plugin. So everything is the same. You just have to learn one single um, idea and you can apply it anywhere. It's so much better than, I don't know, how many different possibilities you had in Drupal 7? Also yeah. 20? Everything was custom and now it's just, yeah, this big unification. Yeah, and back on the field format, I mean, that gives you the best of both things we've talked about there. You've got the plugin and you've got the you know, object inheritance in the single file, but dealing with the data structure that you've handed as the format, instead of it being a large arbitrary array, you're actually handed first class field um, item objects, which are the items that make up the field, and each of those has all those methods for um, you know, data definition and, and um, fetching the values and if you're using an IDE you get auto completion on those so yeah, the field of formats is a classic example of the experience in Drupal being far superior. Yeah, I think there's 21 main plugin types right now and there's even probably going to be more um, but everything and, and the same thing with entity types like everything is an entity type now um, in a good way. Yeah, this really helps. I don't know whether it helps existing Drupal developers, but for new developers, this will be a huge gain, right? Right. Thank you so, so very much for, for taking the time to talk with me, and I will see you sometime soon, I hope. Thanks. Good night, guys. Take care. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.